Welcome. Let's understand further, Synchronous Condenser, an old tool, rediscovered, to address new grid challenges. Synchronous Condenser features are Strengthens the network by adding short circuit capacity. Rotating inertia provides stability to the network. Dynamic MVARS support voltage control. High thermal overload capacity. Very good ride through capability. Synchronous condenser provides inertia support for frequency stability. The balance between supply and demand is critical to maintaining a stable grid frequency. Historically, this balance has been effectively self regulated by the large spinning inertia provided by traditional rotating generators. But there is now a variety of non-synchronous resources on the grid such as wind, solar, tidal and battery energy storage, BESS. They are both intermittent and lacking any electromechanical connection to the grid. The result is an increased rate of change of frequency, ROCOF, that can result in systems tripping offline. The rotating mass in synchronous condensers can provide the instantaneous inertia that keeps the grid frequency within acceptable limits. They also help by damping the frequency excursions and providing more time for the operator to take suitable action to respond to frequency changes. When network faults occur, non-synchronous generators are unable to provide instantaneous support to avoid unnecessary tripping of loads. Their fault current capability is controlled to a level that is close to the nominal current. In contrast, the fault current response of the SC is uncontrolled and defined by its electrical parameters. This means that the fault current can be high in amplitude, possibly five times the nominal current, or even higher. There is a simple reason why fault current is so important? It is because, the majority of the installed protection systems, monitor the difference between a normal operating current, and phenomena such as inrush currents, and a fault current caused by a fault. This difference must be big enough, to be detected easily, otherwise it is hard to protect critical assets, such as transformers or switchgear. Another important point is that, measures of power quality, such as voltage harmonics, unbalance and flicker, relate to a defined fault level in the system. If this fault level is reduced by the introduction of significant levels of renewables then power quality issues will increase. This may result in overriding of power quality limits, or could have a direct negative impact on the connected loads, such as overloading of rotating machines and transformers or disturbing electronic devices. Synchronous condensers also deliver megavolt amperes reactive MVAR, for voltage regulation. An SC cannot provide active power, it only provides reactive power. In an under-voltage condition, such as when there is a voltage dip, reactive power is produced to support the grid voltage. Equally, in an over-voltage condition, where the voltage is becoming too high, reactive power can be absorbed. Where can synchronous condensers be deployed? As shown in figure, synchronous condensers can be deployed in many areas of the grid to support a variety of requirements. For renewable energy projects, SCS support grid code compliance. They support voltage stability and mitigate transient faults when integrating large wind farms. Solar farms can use SCS to increase revenue by boosting active power output as otherwise part of the total inverter power, has to be assigned for reactive power compensation. In conventional power generation synchronous condensers, mitigate frequency instability that occurs, through the imbalance of peak demand, and renewable power, they help prevent an increased ROCOF. They also support the grid with inertia, and offload reactive power, from generators during peak, or ramp times, duck curve. 
SCS can enable power generation operators to sell additional ancillary services, such as higher inertia, additional fault current and reactive power. For transmission system operators, synchronous condensers mitigate protection problems due to decreased short circuit level, rapid changes in power flow, system stability problems, power system splits due to different inertial levels and other issues. They can facilitate inertia planning, provide additional short circuit capacity to strengthen the network and remedy voltage collapse during heavy load peaks. SCS can also mitigate transient faults when integrating large wind farms and enable higher system availability through redundancy when multiple units are installed. To reduce the risk of power oscillation, SCS can be remotely deployed in decentralized grids. For distribution system operators, synchronous condensers mitigate large variations in short circuit level between day and night periods and manage deeper voltage dips caused by reduced short circuit level and general power quality problems. They can be configured to supply switchable fault current support during high slash low load times. SCS also supply fault current and inertia during island operation, such as in microgrids. In industrial applications synchronous condensers resolve power quality issues in weak grids, counteracting voltage dips that cause variable speed drives to trip and interrupt production processes. They increase fault current and reduce the transfer of power quality issues, flicker, harmonics, unbalance, to the grid. Synchronous condensers can mitigate voltage stability issues associated with heavy industries like mining, especially when fossil fuel generators are phased out. Other capabilities include supplying short circuit capacity to strengthen the network and prevent voltage collapse during heavy load peak. They also increase fault current and reduce problems with motor starting and demanding loads like gearless mill drives and furnaces at mines. This is the bird eye view of synchronous condenser system components. Here you can see close up photos of synchronous condenser system components. Types of excitation includes with brush and brushless exciter system. Synchronous condensers require a direct current source to power the field winding, rotor winding, which is usually supplied through a static exciter or a brushless exciter. Static exciters are comprised of an arrangement of collector rings and brushes, which supply the synchronous condenser's field winding. DC power for the field winding is sourced from a static AC and DC converter and the excitation system controller. This system allows positive and negative field excitation of the synchronous condenser, as is often required, thus allowing operation of the condenser across its capability curve. Brushless excitation system includes a rotating exciter, typically mounted at the rear of the condenser, which is powered by the excitation control systems, AC and DC controller. The exciter's rotor supplies the field winding with DC power through a rotating diode wheel. Cooling method and ingress protection includes open air cooled with ingress protection degree. IP23 or IP24W and totally enclosed with water to air heat exchanger with ingress protection degree IP44 or IP55. Beyond the above basic configurations, this includes forced ventilation systems, duct air inlets and or outlets, and other cooling configurations as necessary to ensure optimum system performance, considering the characteristics of the application and the environment where the condenser will be installed. Why use synchronous condensers? Because it's increased flexibility of power system operation in all load conditions. Synchronous condensers provide fast injection of reactive power to limit voltage drops and fast absorption of reactive power to limit voltage rises. 
Provides smooth, stepless, and highly responsive voltage regulation, with no switching required. Provides reactive power compensation, without introduction of significant transients, resonances, or harmonics to the grid. Increased network inertia helps to limit the network's rate of change of frequency, and helps support low voltage ride through requirements. Compensates for voltage drops over long transmission lines, resulting in improved transmission capacity and efficiency. Optimal use of physical installation space can allow other generators on the network to provide more active power by removing the burden of reactive power support at wind farms. This can raise the rated plant capacity. Avoids constant variation in the taps of the elevating transformers. Increases grid reliability due to the ease of voltage adjustment with a synchronous condenser. It is possible to avoid a series of other operations necessary to achieve the same effect, which require more time, more equipment, and more device communication, consequently, more risk. So, we can say key benefits of synchronous condensers are Short-term overload capability The synchronous condenser has a large current overload capability which can provide beneficial system support during emergencies or short-term contingencies. A synchronous condenser can provide more than two times its rating for up to 10 seconds. The machine's significant overload capability can be accounted for in choosing the size of the machine required. SC provides system inertia. Inertia is an inherent feature of a synchronous condenser, since it is a rotating machine. The benefit of this inertia is improved frequency regulation, where more renewable generation is being added, or where existing generation is being retired. SC contribute short circuit. Synchronous condensers provide real short circuit strength to the grid. Increased short circuit improves system stability with weak interconnections, facilitates system protection, and can improve the operation of modern power electronics installations. SC has minimal harmonic generation. The synchronous condenser is not a source of harmonics, and can even absorb harmonic currents. The lack of harmonics help make the synchronous condenser friendly to the surrounding grid and other devices. This provides for ease of integration into existing networks. Synchronous condensers, typical applications involves grid support. Local voltage support during contingencies and faults. Provides short-term overload capability. Improves weak AC grid performance. EHV cables. Excessive shunt compensation. Weak AC grid. In case of wind or solar. Improves or increases short circuit ratio, SCR. Dynamic voltage support. Can improve and extend wind plant capacity ratings. Provides inertia to improve frequency regulation. Regulatory or environmental compliance like. Condenser can replace the dynamic voltage regulation and inertia from retired units. Allows utility to maintain system performance and grid stability. EPA coal requirements. Once through cooling requirements. Generation retirements. SC provides grid code compliance like Enhanced Rakoff, Rate of Change of Frequency Improved LVRT, Low Voltage Ride Through In case of HVDC, SC Provides Short Circuit Strength Dynamic Reactive Power Support, Voltage Regulation Reduces Local Harmonic Distortion, Filter Hybrid System Combining a synchronous condenser with STATCOM FACTS devices, designed to support the network by offering the following facilities. Boost system inertia. Increase the system short circuit level, and system total strength. Provide dynamic voltage regulation. Reactive power injection support, to alleviate voltage dip conditions. Reactive power absorption to potential overvoltage scenario, in light load conditions. Enhance the oscillation damping capability. Aid in maintaining power quality of the network.
Statcom is not effective in case of nearby three phase faults, have reduced overload capability, and fast technology development, which is having risk of obsolescence. While in case of synchronous condenser, full load loss is somewhat higher than Statcom, rotating machine availability is foreseen about 97.5%. Losses and maintenance issues have been often considered to be weak points of synchronous condensers. A more deep analysis show that these issues although present are generally largely overestimated. In order to minimize unplanned outages, the auxiliary systems which caused most of the outages in the older SC may be designed using N1 security criterion. What is the cost comparison between SVC, STATCOM and synchronous condensers? This is very much depending on the requirements, as well as on the voltage the solution will be connected to. But if we have to connect a dynamic solution, providing 70 MVAR to a 132 kV network, cost comparison would be as following, synchronous condensers 100%, SVC 150%, STATCOM 300%. But please keep in mind, these three different solutions do not provide the same functionality. Some functions cannot be provided by the synchronous condensers, some functions cannot be provided by the SVC or the STATCOM. How much is the electricity consumption for a typical synchronous condenser? The active power consumption for a machine is depending on the operation of the machine. This means how much MVARS are absorbed or generated. The losses are normally between 0.7%, no load losses at 0 MVAR, up to 1.1% at maximum over exited operation, maximum MVAR generated. Additional to the machine losses are losses for the consumption of the auxiliary equipment, which is very much depending on the cooling system selection. Here you can pause video and go through typical power quality problems and available mitigation devices. Arrangement from generator hall to step up transformer is shown here, which includes components like synchronous generator, flywheel, generator circuit breaker and auxiliary transformer. In large view of synchronous condenser system. Bird eye view of synchronous condenser system. Side view of synchronous condenser. Plan view of synchronous condenser system. 3D view of synchronous condenser system. Coupling arrangement of pony motor, flywheel and synchronous condenser. Here are some manufacturers technical data is mentioned. Synchronous condensers may be modular, air-cooled, and rated for any range up to 300 MVAR plus per machine. The solution can provide both steady state and dynamic support to the power system efficiently. Synchronous machines can be easily combined in two or three unit sets to offer utilities reliability. Here you can see voltage profile on bus with and without synchronous condenser. With synchronous condenser, it is possible to have good stability. Synchronous condenser, improves the short circuit capacity, with high inertia it can stabilize, the frequency and voltage, have high overload capacity. Thank you for your attention and time. More stuff coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe.